Welcome to New Day Northwest. Kicking things off this morning is celebrity antiques appraiser and good friend, Dr. Lori. Hi. How are you? How are you? And today she's teaching us how to thrift and flip for extra cash so that we get the most we can for our goodies, right? Yes, that's what we want to do, right? And Buy low, <laughs> sell high. Exactly. It's an age-old principle. Yeah. Most of us have something at home that we have from our grandparents or whatever. We don't know what it's worth. So that's that, right. Let's start there. How right. do we figure this out? So free, we do free appraisals at the Seattle Home Show, as you well know. Mm -hmm. But basically, the best thing to do is to know what the market will bear now. You know, you could price anything. That's a wish and a dream. That's a price. But I want you to understand what the actual value really is on the market today. And then where do I get this actual value, right? So Good different point. pieces, different places. You can't sell everything in one place and expect to get the highest dollar value for every single thing. So certain objects should be sold in different places. And by um, that you mean you might take it to a... a home show here it might be better at a, a more niche market store over yeah there, so basically kind of what I tend to see is I tend to see in fact um, for example jewelry tends to sell in more niche markets that relate to women or men around Valentine's Day right, right? <laughs> so you want to think about that but you also want to think about the ideas where certain objects are going to be more interesting to a particular market like military collectibles mm -hmm. right so I might not be or you might not be collecting military collectibles so on the sites where we all always are or the social media areas where we yes. always are, that might not be the best place for you. Bigger pieces, local pieces, I always say look for those local sites like the mm -hmm. Let Go and the Offer Up and those kind because right. while they may not command as high value or how as high prices you can then liquidate them for the space for the room totally makes, makes sense. sense go where the collectors are right. and and right. see what they will give you for it and also this is just great for repurposing items right. this might not be something that you're into but you can also find things if you're looking for something yes. for a new home or whatever a swap so that, that great kind of idea of okay we want to be eclectic in our decorations but we also want to be thrifty so people will go to thrift stores and they'll buy different things I always say the three most valuable types of objects fine art furniture precious metals including jewelry okay and costume jewelry and baskets tend to be the things that are most overlooked so a lot of people are saying well what about costume jewelry costume jewelry is really all the rage now because people are saying I don't know if I want to spend so much on fine mm -hmm. jewelry and I'm afraid it, that the, the security issue with fine jewelry will I lose it right. so if you were to buy this particular or be relieved of it or be relieved <laughs> of it yeah well, by someone else <clears throat> so basically what you have here is a piece of costume jewelry or a set of costume jewelry set are always more valuable and this piece dates to the early years of the 20th century okay so now we know the date we know a little bit about the pieces these are faux okay so they're mm -hmm. plastic trying to look like um, actual stones are trying to look like rose quartz in this particular case um, the time period is indicative you can tell that kind of um, those color schemes comes in around the 1920s to around the 1930s the art deco and we're experiencing the 100th anniversary of that so this would be a very good thrift store pick yes right I think that's really really pretty it's really very pretty and also it has some good metals it's made very well the other thing you want to think about so if you were to buy this at a thrift store say you're gonna spend five to fifteen dollars on it at a thrift store you could resell it on a, on a site like Etsy or first dibs for maybe as much as sixty five to eighty five dollars so that's something that's not oh retire on it money but that is something and right. if you keep doing this regularly you can actually find out that there's a lot of money in the costume jewelry if this were marked with a mark like Weiss or Coro Sarah Coventry Monet Napier any of those you might actually see as much as a hundred to five hundred dollars for a Are similar set I am not kidding an Eisenberg set like this from the 1950s could be close to four hundred five hundred dollars for the set so learn a little bit about learn what a little bit and for. it's at dr. .com and on our YouTube channel dr. Lori V Perfect. easy Perfect. and then sometimes they're repurposed excuse me for my so reach pretty. no but look at how so cool cute. that is <laughs> that's a wonderful piece where someone said I'm gonna take this frame and I'm gonna put my old broken broken costume jewelry pieces in it and make a picture some people do this and they make it in the form of a holiday tree and they put it up at holiday time and it's grandma's old pieces and what sort a of a memory craft. piece it's a great craft. And look at this, Lori. There's a, a thimble that's been bedazzled, and it's it's the little basket in the middle. I just love so that. So these are so craft. These are crafty pieces, and that's based on a form called Millefiore from Italy. The art historians would like that too. Very so good. they're oh, good. There Very you go. good. Very good. Let's talk about some of the things that people have brought in, and, and tell me what you think. Okay, people. You were, never know. We're nice enough to bring it. Up. I like toys. Everybody likes toys, and toys, of course, are fun. I want you to start to learn about the materials of the toys. So celluloid, which is an early 
jelly plastic type. This one's for Easter. Uh, is the actual bunny rabbit. He kind of looks like wax or resin, mm -hmm. but he's actually celluloid plastic. And then it's lithograph tint. Wind up toys as long as they have the little key are usually hold their value pretty well. This piece worth about seventy five dollars. Isn't that something? It's a lot because people pay a lot to recapture their childhood. Yeah. I would pay a lot to recapture mine. Okay, so that's so what you're looking at. your toys at home. Right. Let's take a look at the scale. Okay, what is this, this is a scale. Now the scale is a marriage, and when I say a marriage, you're married, I'm not. But basically, <laughs> a marriage is this, right? Two am pieces. I the dead weight no. or am I the saucer? <laughs> I love you. You're so funny. No, you are the best part of it. Here it is. So you see this? When I say it's a marriage, two dissimilar things come together. Yes. So while they are together, this is an early 20th century weight, but this is a mid 20th century pan. So they put them together oh. as a scale in terms of time period. It's kind of the May, December romance kind right, of thing. Right. So it's a little bit earlier and later, but that's okay because it still would work. And a scale like this, which probably dates again comparatively to again that early 20th century time period. Period. Value on that is probably about seventy dollars. Interesting. People like scales. <laughs> Weaponry. I notice a lot yeah. of this stuff at. Um, I'm trying to think like Celtic shows and yeah. things like that. There are lots Renaissance of swords fairs. and daggers and and yeah. things that yeah. people just want to collect. So how would you know about something like this? If you hold that, okay, I'm going to take off the sheath. Got okay, it. here's the crossbar. It's going to that's going to protect your hand. Mm -hmm. But basically, if you look for curves, you're going to see Asian pieces. If you look for and you can see here, this particular piece is also Asian. So any kind of curve, if it's a straight blade, usually you have an American or a Western piece from Europe. This okay. particular blade is curved, and that blade, of course, is from Asia. Asia, carved as well here, probably by hand, and value on that piece is just about $200. Wow. Yeah, see, pretty nice. See, I would nice. never know that. I yes. would see that in a drawer and edged, think, I don't know, that's a thing. Edged weapons, pretty pretty valuable, I have to really? say. Really? Yeah. All right, let's talk about this. This came from my house. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. What fun. So these are fun. And you notice I always wear the gloves and people say, Dr. Lloyd, why always the gloves? You see this? This is where the oils on your hands will be attracted to the pieces, attract dirt, and then deteriorate the pieces. So that's from your hands yeah. over the years. Well, this was my grandfather's. So this was an actual telephone, right. and that's exactly what happened to Early it. Early 20th century. It's in beautiful condition. I mean, I mean, you're not going to make a phone call on it, but you wouldn't today anyway, <laughs> because we all have our iPhones. But basically, what you're looking at here is a piece that's worth about $140. Really? Really nice. How about that? They're a look. You know, people like the look, because they we're looking cool. to decorate with these pieces, yeah. too. We're doing a lot of that. Well, I've got a little wire problem. Can I fix that or you, would that ruin the... I would not I, fix that. Just leave that Because like that. the only best way to fix that is literally for you to replace it. Can I just... Do you remember that, people? Some of us remember that, Margaret. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's metal, not plastic. And it's metal, not plastic, right? Okay, what so, about this little guy so here? So he's adorable, but not too valuable. He's in very good condition. I would probably say he's about $20 because mass produced in very large numbers. So you want to think about those particular elements. Things that are mass produced in very large numbers, like a straight blade here. You know, so a straight careful. blade. I know you got to be careful with these. And then typically you will have this is celluloid or an early plastic, like Bakelite, mm -hmm. right? But this particular piece uh, is trying to be mo model ivory, which was oftentimes used. Early 20th century straight blades, barbershop collectibles. That's about $10 on that one. But then you have celebrity collectibles like this. This was That's purchased so cool. at an estate sale, and it's actually the key to the city of Tacoma from Art Link Letters estate. How about that? Yeah. So, you know, you've got a celebrity collectible, and you have a lot of that with the connection, of course, the close proximity to California, and, of course, all of the folks who are coming here to do, you know, uh, theater and such in Seattle. You're looking at this piece, and this piece is probably worth about $250. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So you just never know. Get out there and find out what's in those boxes. That's right. <laughs> Negotiate. Watch the YouTube channel. I'll teach you what to look yes. for. Yes. We'll put that, make sure we put that up today Thank on you. our website. You can see Dr. Lori at the Seattle Home Show underway now at the CenturyLink Field Event Center with hundreds of exhibitors. It is the perfect place for inspiration for that next remodel project on your list. There's even a kid zone featuring a butterfly house and planetarium, so everybody's going to be happy. We're also giving away five family four packs of tickets to the Seattle Home Show. Please head over to New Day's Facebook page and comment on our post asking which room in your home most needs a makeover. <laughs> Good luck. When we come back, the mistakes adults don't realize they might be making by oversharing info on their kids. Warnings in the age of Sharonhood after this. The preceding segment of New Day Northwest was sponsored by Seattle Home Show.